want to get back to what I was saying at the top of the hour and bring in Martha McCallum, the uh, <laughs> previously introduced, with crashing her iPhone on the set. <laughs> okay. Well, you know. You know more about politics on the inside than I do. And we have the president saying, we've got to get health care done. We've got Mark Meadows saying, we're very, very close. What's your reading of the, the closeness of a deal on health care? I think Congress needs a win as much as the White House needs a win on this. They do need to prove that they can get something done. Uh, I think it's fascinating, actually, that the president sort of dropped it like a hot potato and then decided to come back to it. Um, and that was a push from Congress as well. I think they may be getting closer on this than your previous guest uh, suggested, yeah. because really the Freedom Caucus needs to prove that they are willing to play along. Um, and you just look at what happened in Kansas and the reaffirmation uh, with the election of Ron Estes. You know, I think those sorts of signals are important. This is a golden opportunity for the Republican majority, and they really have to be careful with this. They can't blow it. They've got to put stuff on the ledger. Ron Estes won the Kansas yeah. we call it by election, special election. Right. He won by seven points. Yeah. That's not a huge margin because it's a very conservative area. But you think that is supportive of the Republican Party becoming the Republican Party of government? I think if, if it had been a loss, it would have oh, sent a disaster. very dangerous message. I think the fact that it was a win is obviously a win for President Trump, who put his name on this in the form of a tweet, you know, saying, please get out and vote for Ron Estes. You had Mike Pence on the ground there. Ted Cruz was on the ground there. So a lot of people sort of putting themselves on the line for this in Kansas because they know it sends a signal going forward. Now, Estes He's got a little bit dinged, I think, by being a treasure for, Sam Brand for Sam Brownback, who's gotten a little bit of pushback in his own state where he's the governor. Um, but still, I, I think it's, it's on that side of the ledger for the White House. You're almost up with 100 days, the first 100 days of the <laughs> presidency. 83, 83 days. It is. It's 83 days. That's yeah. right. Um, he hasn't got all that he wanted to do no. done in the 100 days, has he? No, uh, he has not. I mean, I think it's interesting that you have heard Zippo about extreme vetting in a while, right? That was one of the first things out of the gate. Haven't heard much on the wall either. Um, but I do think what we're seeing is that Global events tend to take precedent when you're the leader of the free world. And I think there's been a, a sort of renewed focus on those things with oh. the China meeting. There was sort of a shift, too, that came from the White House as well. They said, you know what, this is going to be an international week, right, when you had the meetings with, uh, the king, with Jordan, uh, King Hussein of Jordan, and you had the meeting with the leader of China, which apparently went swimmingly well. If you listen to President Trump behind the scenes, he said we got along <laughs> a lot better than uh, anybody thought we possibly could. Um, so I think that that sort of was desired to take the focus off some of this domestic stuff. But watch this Mick Mulvaney story and what he's doing with trying to streamline these government agencies. I find this to be one of the most fascinating stories that's actually going on out there right now. Um, he's confronting all these agencies and saying, look, start with a blank piece of paper. Tell us what you need. There are 43 different agencies in the United States government that do worker training programs, and they have no one leader overseeing all of them. He says, look, from a business perspective, that's ridiculous. Let's get one worker training agency going here. So he's really talking about changing the face of bureaucracy in Washington. And I think that's a fascinating drain the swamp story that they are moving on. That would be a very popular move. Yeah. It is a very popular move. Martha, thanks for joining Thank us. You, Stuart. Good luck tonight. Sorry for the crashing in. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> 82 I do that kind days. of thing a lot. <laughs> is, it, is this the 82nd day today? Today's 83. 83 today. Yeah. I yeah. miscounted it. Okay. Martha, thanks for joining us. Good to Thank see you, you. Stuart. Thanks for having me.